Let's evaluate this integral. I think at first glance it looks kind of gross, and it kind of is, but we can make things simpler. If you look at the denominator, you could notice that I have it in a very familiar form. That form being x squared plus a squared raised to the power of 1 half. What's different here is I have that 7 on top, so it's not that different. So once I notice that, I know that I could use some trig substitution. In our case, it's going to be a tan substitution because I have a plus. So I'm going to set x is equal to a tan theta. And in my case, a is going to be equal to 2 because I have a squared is equal to 4. So x is equal to 2 tan theta. And dx is going to be the derivative of that. So 2 secant squared theta d theta. So I'm using tan substitution so that when I rewrite my integral, so let's rewrite everything in terms of what I just defined. So with respect to theta, I have x squared on top, so I'm going to have 4 tan squared theta over, I have x squared plus 4, so I'm going to have 4 tan theta, tan squared theta, sorry, plus 4, raised to the power of 7 over 2, times my dx, which I just defined as 2 secant squared theta, so times 2 secant squared theta d theta. Now I have to simplify things. So first let's tackle the denominator situation. So I have 4 tan squared theta plus 4. What I'm going to do here is I'll just use the trig identity that tells me that this just equals to secant, or sorry, 4 secant squared theta. So when I rewrite this again, I'm going to take this up here so that I have 8 tan squared theta times secant squared theta over 4 secant squared theta raised to 7 over 2 d theta. And now some more simplification. So I can take out my constants outside of the integral. So I have 8 over 4 to the power of 7 over 2. And then my integral now when I simplify things, get rid of all the excess secants and tans, I'll just get tan squared theta is actually no more excess tans yet, but cleaning up my secants, I get tan squared theta over secant to the power of 5 theta d theta. And now I'm going to rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines because I think that's just easier to solve. Um, also to simplify my constant over here, this is going to simplify to 1 over 16, I believe. And then my integral, when I write it in terms of sines and cosine, I know that tan is equal to sine over cosine, and secant is just 1 over cosine, so that I end up with sine squared theta over cosine squared theta times cosine to the power of 5 theta d theta. So there's just a lot of simplification going on, and that's just the bulk of the work for these kind of questions. Anyways, so I'll lose my cosine in the denominator, and it all reduces to sine squared theta, cosine cubed theta, d theta. And this is the most simplified form I have so far. And now this just becomes a very simple trigonometric integral. And to solve this, I notice that I have cosine raised to an odd power, meaning that I have, an, I have supplied an extra copy of cosine, so I'm going to basically just split this up into cosine squared theta times cosine theta. And instead of cosine theta, I'm going to be rewriting this as cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. I have other videos made on trigonometric integrals. If this is your first time seeing one, you could learn how to do these real quick. So sine squared theta times 1 minus sine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. The reason I did this is that so I could do a quick u substitution where u is equal to sine theta and du is equal to cosine 
theta. And rewriting everything in terms of u, I'm going to get 1 over 16 is still there. I'm going to get u squared minus u to the power of 4 du. And now this is very easy to integrate because this is just quick power rules. So again, keeping my constant out, I'm going to get u to the power of 3 over 3 minus u to the power of 5 over 5 plus some arbitrary constant c because this is still an indefinite integral so we cannot forget about an arbitrary constant. And all I have left to do is to just plug in my u. Sorry, that's not the last thing, but you know, one of the last steps. I said u is equal to sine so that this becomes sine, sine cubed theta over three minus sine raised to the power of five theta over five plus c. And this is everything done. However, it's all done with respect to theta. So to answer my initial problem, I'm going to need to rewrite everything in terms of x. And the way to do that is to go back to my original definition. So I said that x is equal to 2 tan theta. So I'm going to write that down here again. So x is equal to 2 tan theta, right? Well, let's isolate tan. I know that tan theta is equal to the is equal to x over 2 and by definition tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent of a triangle so let me construct a quick triangle if this is my angle theta then my opposite is going to be equal to x and my adjacent side is going to be equal to 2 so that my hypotenuse is equal to 4 plus x squared the reason I'm doing this is so that I can rewrite my answer over here, but in terms of x. So what is sine? Sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse over triangle, right? Well, I have all the pieces, so I know that sine theta is going to be equal to x over the square root of 4 plus x squared. So now going back to my solution over here, I'll just rewrite this sine in terms of x. So I have 1 over 16 times x cubed over the square root of 4 minus x squared over, this is also cubed, over 3 minus, same thing, x raised to the power of 5 over the square root of 4 minus x squared to the power of 5 over 5 plus c. Now this, this doesn't look pretty, so we're going to clean things up with some algebra. And so I end up with over 16. I'm going to keep it out. So then I can just bring some things down and merge some powers. And I get x cubed over 3 times x squared. Oh, sorry, did I put minus? It should be plus. Um, x squared plus 4 raised to the power of 3 halves minus x to the power of 5 over 5 times x squared plus 4 to the power of 5 halves. Oops. <laughs> Raised to the power of 5 halves plus c. And that's it.